internet it's Amelia I would just like to start by saying that I am very sorry that I have not been posting I have a very interesting video for you but first I have a couple channel updates if you would like to skip that go straight to the timestamp that's somewhere on this video right now I have no idea how editing works so for the channel updates, again, sorry I haven't been posting. I am a perfectionist, but a specific kind of perfectionist where it's not, I need what I put out there to be absolutely perfect. This content is not perfect in any way, shape, or form. It's more along the lines of whenever I try something new and then I like hit a speed bump, it's like I hit a wall instead and I completely tailspin and it's horrible, but I'm trying to work on that. I'm trying to work on working through issues, not just yeah, giving up. Anyway, I have a very interesting video prepared for you. I've also been making the move towards more highly researched, highly scripted content. Long script that I'm gonna be reading from. You can see from the title of this video and from the links I have in the description that I did a lot of research for this, so that was new and that's kind of what made me tail spin out. I hope you liked this video. Lucy Maud Montgomery's life is very long and complex, so I'm not going to be able to cover the entire thing. I'm going to cover from her birth up until when she moved to Ontario with her husband. So like more her childhood teenage years when she was still kind of trying to find her voice as a writer more of that stuff i'm pretty sure that this is going to have to be like a series where i'll have to do like two three maybe four videos because i cannot get it all in one especially because i'm going to be adding in little stories and focusing on parts her life is so interesting anyway here it is Enjoy. Lucy Maud Montgomery was born November 30th, 1874, in what was then called Clifton and is now New London, on Prince Edward Island. Her mother was named Clara Wooler McNeil and died tragically of tuberculosis when Montgomery was only 21 months old. Her father was named Hugh John Montgomery, and after his wife's death, left the island entirely and moved to Prince Albert in Saskatchewan. He left Maud with her maternal grandparents in Cavendish, which is actually the town Avonlea is based on. She likes to be called Maud, not Lucy, and make sure to spell that M-A-U-D, not M-A-U-D-E, no E. It looks horrible with an E. It's great without an E. She has a whole E thing about her name, kind of like Anne has an E thing about her name. And you'll notice a lot of similarities between the two of them. Anyway, Maud was left with her elderly maternal grandparents in Cavendish. Cavendish is actually the town that Avonlea is based on. Her grandparents were called Alexander Marquis and Lucy Ann McNeil. Like Anne, she was a young girl with a very older couple. Also like Anne, she found companionships in her imagination and books and nature. But it was very hard to be so alone and isolated. Looking back, she would say that this was a time when she felt most unloved and unwanted. When she was six, she started to attend a one-room school near her grandparents' home in Cavendish. Except for a single school year from 1890 to 1891, when she went to live with her father in Prince Albert, she attended that school her entire education. While visiting her father, she published her first poem on Cape La Force. It was published in The Patriot, a newspaper on the island. Once she moved back to the island, she studied and finished school in grade 10, graduating in 1893. Well, graduating. Later that year, she started studying for her teacher's license at Prince of Will College and completed her degree in one year instead of two, graduating with honors. Now who does that remind me of? 
Montgomery always had an aptitude for writing and storytelling. Since the village post office was actually run out of her kitchen, she knew what all her neighbors were doing and knew all the gossip and used that as inspiration for her stories. Since the island was founded mainly by Scottish and Irish settlers and immigrants, she knew all about Scottish oral tradition and folklore. She was able to take in the storytelling, the structure, the narrative techniques, and they were able to help her become the masterful storyteller and author you know and love today. After she graduated from Prince of Wales College, she started teaching. She taught at three different schools all on the island. Bideford, Belmont, and Lower Bedeck. I apologize for my pronunciation. She briefly left teaching for a single year to study English literature at Dalhousie in Nova Scotia. Now, this is very important because at the time there were very few women seeking higher education. Women were expected to either teach or be married, nothing more. Montgomery choosing to save her money and to use those savings to go seek higher education was very modern of her. Also, her time at Dalhousie marked the first time she was actually paid for her writing, and it was the beginning of a very long and illustrious career as an author. In 1898, while teaching, her grandfather died. She returned home immediately and took care of her grandmother. At this point, her career was in a bit of a rough patch as she had to take care of her grandmother for the next 13 years. Except for a brief period where she worked as a proofreader at the Daily Echo in Halifax, she was basically just kept at the house. However, she was still able to send off poems and stories and lots of stuff to various newspapers and magazines in Canada, America, and even across the pond to Britain. She was rejected, like, all the time. However, she was still able to earn a little money. It wasn't a lot, but it was still pretty rewarding. Like, emotionally, not financially. Finally, in 1905, she sits down and she writes Anne of Green Gables. I think, I think that I speak for all of us when I say thank you, Lucy Maud Montgomery. Thank you for the amazing gift you've given. However, she still has many challenges to overcome. She sent it to a bunch of publishers, but received rejection after rejection. So many rejections, in fact, she put the manuscript in a hat box and forgot about it. In 1907, however, she finds it and tries again. She actually gets it published this time at Page Company in Boston, and it's published in 1908. It's an immediate bestseller and starts a very successful career for Montgomery. I would also like to add that I think that this is one of my favorite parts of the story because it has such a lovely message. Like, if at first you don't succeed, try and try again. It's fine to take a break if you need to, but get back in there! Try again! You may be pleasantly surprised by the result. That little story is actually what inspired me to start doing this again, so thank you, Lucy Maud Montgomery. <laughs> In March 1911, her grandmother sadly passed away. Shortly after, on July 5th, 1911, Montgomery married Reverend Ewan McGregor. Fun fact, the two had actually been secretly engaged since 1906. Before her future husband, Montgomery had a few romantic relationships, most notable of which, Nate Lockhart. Okay, sidebar, that's an absolutely beautiful name, Nate Lockhart. He sounds like he should be the love interest in a romance novel set in medieval time of the forbidden love between a scribe's apprentice and a beautiful princess who must rebel against her own destiny. <laughs> Nate Lockhart is what many say to be the inspiration for the character of Gilbert Blythe. It's kind of odd considering that she was actually married to another man while writing most of the books, but remember, these were stories of her childhood. They were like high school sweethearts. They exchanged letters, like love letters, during school. Now, we don't exactly know what happened because these letters disappeared. 
probably because Montgomery actually burned them. However, she did immortalize one, the first letter they ever exchanged, by writing it into her journal in red ink. <laughs> I don't know why, but that just sends like romantic shivers down my spine. <laughs> After marrying the Reverend, she moved to Ontario. This is where I leave you, since her life is too long and complicated to be summarized into a single video. If you like it and you want me to make another one, maybe the next part of her life, please like and comment. Also follow me on Instagram and Tumblr, all the same username, and Shirley was my childhood. Now, as I like to conclude every video, I will reach into my big book of AUs and choose one for you. No, way too long. Okay, that, that, and that is all one. So we'll save that for a the shorter video. Ah, ah! Gender Swap AU. This is a story of John Shirley, but make sure to spell that J-O-N, not J-O-H-N. John with an H is the most boring thing you've ever seen in your entire life. John without an H is new and vaguely exotic and so romantic. So of course, J-O-N. John came to work at Green Gables, but as he continued to work there, it became clear that he was very smart and could really deserve a good education. They hired Jerry so John could go to school. Mr. Phillips thinks it's below him to teach John and makes fun of him terribly. John still wants to be a teacher and is criticized for not being manly enough. He also loves to read Jane Eyre and is constantly criticized for being too girly. Because he's like that, he gets bullied by Billy a lot. Luckily, he has caught the eye of a certain Gertrude Ploy. Gertrude still wants to be a doctor and has to fight a lot of prejudice to do it. Hold on. This does make sense because the first female doctor in Canada was named Emily Stowe. She had to earn her medical certificate in the United States, but in 1870, she was granted special permission to attend classes. She faced prejudice, but she was still allowed in, so Gertrude Blythe could still become a doctor. Um, oh, her daughter was the first woman to earn a medical degree in Canada. When did she earn her medical degree? Um... She started in 1883. Okay, so that's all before Green Gables is set. So Gertrude Blythe is going to become a doctor. Anyway, that's all I have for you at the moment. I hope you enjoy it all. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Links are in the description down below. And until next time I post.